Hello, my name is Gubums, and in case you don't know who I am, I am a competitor from NA, and I've hit rank 1 pretty much every set since I've started playing. I also played in the set 6 World Finals, finishing at 5th place. So, I hit Challenger in NA in about 5 days, with just under 100 games played, and today I want to show you some of the best or most consistent comps to play, and how to play them. So, for the most part, understanding the spots that you have to find direction for these comps is going to be a lot more important than the comps themselves. And I chose to keep the list a little bit short, because even though... Uh, playing a lot of different comps is going to be really useful at the top level. If you really just care about climbing, if you really just care about LP, keeping that list to like a short 4 or 5 is going to be a lot um, easier, and it's going to be just better for your climb overall. Um, the first or best comp in the game is going to be this Piltover Zeri comp, and what it is is really just playing around early Piltover. So Piltover just looks like Echo, Vi, Orianna, or Jace. And if you have these on 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, or about 2-5 is probably going to be the latest. Uh, you're just really going to want to start up a Lost Streak, stack up your T-Hex on a Lost Streak, and then at around 3-5, 3-6, or 4-1, you level to 7, roll it down, cash out. Cash out by just winning one round, and your T-Hex is going to be you know, at 30 stacks, roughly. Um, and you just don't never want to sell your T-Hex for the rest of the game, and pretty much this is going to be the board that you play after that. And the most important items for this comp is really just going to be Last Whisper and Zeke's. I noticed that um, a lot of players prioritize this Gwinsu Rageblade on Zeri, even at the top level. Um, frankly, it's a pretty mediocre item on her. I mean, it, it is a really good item on her, but it's uh, significantly overrated. So I would say it's probably not even a top 5 item on her. By far the most important item in this comp is going to be that Last Whisper, and then at least one or two Zeke's. And then after that, you do want to fill out your Zeri with um, three damage items. So it looks like Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, uh, IE, even Deathblade is fine, Rageblade is fine, but um, just don't over-prioritize that Rageblade. You do want to have some tank items on your Sejuani in the form of Vow, some anti-heal in Sunfire, and just fill your Urgot with um, certain, you know, defensive tanky items. It could be BT, BT is best, it could be Titan's Resolve, Titan's Resolve is second best, but otherwise it could even just be like a Vow, it could be a Bramble, like some items that just give him a good amount of tankiness, it could be Hodge as well, that gives him a, de a decent amount of damage. And then, otherwise, you are just going to be playing like this board on 7. And then at level 8, you want a level 4 gunner. Obviously, before you have Senna, that's going to look like Tristana. Otherwise, if you have like a 2-star Jarvan, he's going to be good on every, pretty much any comp until you have like a Senna or Tristana to play. And yeah, that's going to be your comp. The only really important augment, or sorry, the only like really, really strong augment for this comp specifically is going to be dueling gunners. Because what it does is more or less gives you a rage blade for all of your gunners. I'm not going to talk about in this guide like all the different augments that you can take to play this comp because I want to kind of do a more comprehensive list. However, there's going to be a lot of strong generic augments such as tons of stats, gifts from the fallen that just give stats to your entire team. And these augments are going to be good for every comp uh, I list today. But yeah, dueling gunners is going to be like the only comp, sorry, the only augment that's going to be specific to this comp that's going to be really strong for this comp. And then I would say the second best comp in the game is actually the same comp, but you don't hit Piltover. This is going to be a significantly weaker version than the Piltover version. The Piltover version is like obviously stronger, but I still think that Zeri is such a strong carry that you don't actually need Piltover to play this comp. If you find that the comp is uncontested in your lobby and you have the items for it, which to me, once again, are Last Whisper and Zeke's and a couple frontline items, then you can pivot into this comp. Um, you know, maybe you find even one Zeri, you can pivot in. But obviously, if you find three Zeris, you can fill up the rest of your comp with some of these units. So the core of your comp is going to be Zeri, Jace, Jinx, and Senna. Um, obviously, Senna can be, once again, it could be Tristana before you hit her. But four gunners plus like random frontline. The best frontliners in the game currently on four costs are going to be Shen and J4. Uh, I put a second J4 here just to indicate that like, um, if you don't hit anything else, like if you don't hit some of these five costs, Scion, Sedge, um, it doesn't matter, you could really just play another J4 if you don't hit Rise. Like, obviously, these are kind of like the premium units, but they're completely unnecessary for the comp to function. You can play like a second J4, you can play like Urgot, of course, as well. Um, one last thing about these comps is that you're going to want to think about the Zon augments. Um, so pretty much once you have Zon in, at 2 you get 1 augment, and at 2 you, at, you get 2. Sorry, at 2 you get 1 augment, at two at 4 you get 2 augments. The best augments on Zeri are going to be, the best one, single best one is going to be Virulent Plague. Um, otherwise, uh, just filling it with Shimmer, Adaptive are both fine. And then you want to give Exoskeleton to Urgot or Explosion to Urgot. Just pretty much tank stats on Urgot. If you're not playing Urgot, then it's also fine. Like you're just playing two Zon, you just give whatever it is to Zeri. This setup is the same thing. You are playing four Zon, so you get two mods. One for Urgot, one for Zeri most of the time. And then the second or third in a way best comp in the game is going to be this Ionia Kaisa build. So. It's gonna be, it's gonna look like this, Ari over Jin, uh, as soon as you have it, and then Warwick kind of goes in at eight, so you don't really need this. Uh, you're gonna be playing three Challenger until then. 
Uh, this is currently with a spat, or sorry, this is not with a spat. This is seven Ionia just because Ari goes in over Jin once you get her. But you're going to want to fill out Kaisa with you know some AP items. Gunblade is her best item so long as you have damage on her already. But Gunblade as a solo item is not going to be very strong. So you the, by damage items I mean stuff like Giant, like obviously Deathcap and Archangels are going to be the strongest ones. But stuff like Deathcap, or sorry, stuff like Giant Slayer, stuff like uh, Morellos, stuff like Shiv are going to be really strong. You do want to fill out your Yasuo with some of these tanky DPS items in the form of Titans, Edge of Night, BT, even IE is fine. But generally speaking, you do want to have at least one Titans, maybe even two, and then you can just fill out his items um, with random other stuff. It's not going to be the most specific, but the strongest item, the strongest single item is going to be Titans. And then you're going to want to fill out your Shen with three tank items. Um, obviously, Sunfire is going to be good if you don't have a, a Morello on your Kai'Sa for anti-heal. Spark is going to be good if you don't have a Shiv on either your Kai'Sa or your Karma for Shredding MR. And then just generic tank items. Vow is the strongest one in the game, but, you know, Warmogs, Bramble, Stoneplate, all of these are going to work. And then after that, you do want to just, like, fill out RB, RE with random um, AP or damage items in the late game. And then Warwick, if you um, don't want to play him because you hit, like, a, say, a two-star Scion, you can just, you know, feel free to play three ch Challenger. It's not going to be that bad. Sen is also another really strong comp to play, or sorry, strong unit to play in this comp. And once again, this uh, comp just is going to do really well with the generic augments, such as tons of stats, stuff that just gives your team stats. But um, the only comp-specific augment for this comp is going to be Sentinel Spirit. So if you get that, you should probably look towards this comp. The way to get into this comp really is just going to be playing around Irelia and Jin in the early and mid game. Just three Ionia in the early mid game is really strong, either with uh, Set or Zed. And then pretty much because Ash and Ash and Akshan, so over here, pair really well with this comp because of Jin, and they're also really strong for their cost, your mid game and early game is generally going to be really strong. The only problem kind of with this kind of getting into this comp that people are going to struggle with is obviously Kaisa uses AP items, but if you notice like this core kind of like five units, you're not going to really have an AP item holder. So most of the time you're actually going to have to want to build some AD items and some tank items um, first, like in the early mid game, because they're just going to be like what you can fill it out with and then try to get into the AP items like around stage four or from your augments later stages into the game to fill out your Kaisa items because just you don't have anyone to really hold them in the early game unless you hit a karma and karma is not that strong of an item holder unless she's at two star because most of the time you won't have um pretty much the front line that stalls out for her damage to come through and it's also difficult to fit uh invoker in when you're playing around these because just dead eye is one of the strongest traits in the game right now you do really want to be playing around jin irelia because they're two of the strongest units in the early game right now so yeah this comp doesn't win nearly as much as uh the zeri comp but it is much easier to get into, and it is a very consistent comp. So the next comp I have is going to be what I call like a really underrated and underplayed comp. It is getting to be a little bit more popular at the high elo, but I still find that it's like relatively unpopular. So you're going to want to build a zero with Rage Blade, you know, and then raw damage items such as Death Cap, such as Giant Slayer, such as Guard Breaker. You want to put some aura items on Talia with Chalice or Zeke's. And once again, with Azir, Rageblade is not going to be the most important item. It is going to be quite good on him, unlike Zeri, where I don't even think it reaches a top 5 item. I think Rageblade on Azir is easily a top 5 item. The thing with Rageblade uh, for AD and AP comps is that for AP comps, Bow is the one of the worst items in the game. And for AD comps, Rod is one of the worst items in the game. So the reason why Rageblade is so good is because it helps you manage your item economy really well. Obviously, it kills a Bow in AP comps, it kills a Rod in AD comps. That's why it's going to be really strong. But try not to over-prioritize this item. Um, slamming other items is going to work, you know, just really well in a pinch. And then this comp, you're really going to want to focus on utility tank items instead of like a full tank item on Nasus. Nasus will be the best uh, unit to hold your tank items on, but utility uh, tank items such as Locket, such as Vow, such as Shroud and Zephyr are going to be better because in this comp, you're not playing five Shurima, which means that only one of your Shurima units, Ascend, is obviously never going to be Talia, so it's going to be Azir or Nasus. And since it's generally going to be Azir, your Nasus is kind of missing out on a lot of uh, stats from Shurima. So he's not going to be as tanky as you might be used to if you're if you're used to playing 5 or 7 Shurima. In the next patch, they're buffing 7 and 5 Shurima, so maybe at that time, um, stacking Nasus is going to be stronger. But for now, I think this is the premier way to play Azir, because pairing Lu uh, with Lux is just a really strong unit. And Lux just doesn't function that well as a, as a primary carry. So having support from Azir, having support from Strategist, giving your entire backline AP and your entire frontline kind of like some tank stats, it's just going to be really, really powerful. 
and there's really no specific augments um, with this comp. I think the only one is like maybe tactical superiority. It does give like pretty much your entire team 10 AD, 10 AP, which is pretty strong, but there are gonna be a lot of augments in the game that are, you know, just about as strong. So generally speaking, this comp is like playable from any spot. Um, I'd say the problem with this comp is, we joke about that it's like a third or third comp because you really can't go bot four with this comp if you're donkey rolling at seven. You, you are fitting Teemo at eight, completely unnecessary. But yeah, if you're just donkey rolling at seven for this comp, most of the time you will top four, but it's extremely difficult to win with this comp unless you are high rolling. And then another thing with this comp is that you generally don't have to build as much or you don't have to be as reliant on anti-heal such as Sunfire and Morello because Teemo, as, you know, anytime you get to put him in is going to kind of give you enough anti-heal to be fine. And in a pinch, if you really need anti-heal at level seven, you can drop Garen for Teemo. You will be losing that Radiant item on Lux or J4, but sometimes the anti-heal is more important. The only item you really care about on Lux is Gunblade, but um, giving her, you know, random damage items is going to be good. Blue buff, Archangels, Deathcap, all these are fine. Um, and then finally for the last two, I actually have two reroll comps. So this is going to be Noxus, Katarina, Darius carry. Uh, it's going to be Darius main carry, but you do really want to uh, go for three star Darius and three star Cat on level seven. And pretty much your win rate is going to be a lot higher if you end up getting both of them upgraded. So on Darius, you want to build damage items such as IE and BT. These are like the two core items. And then you want to fill it out with either, you know, Giant Slayer, Titans, Hand of Justice. All of these are going to be really strong um, items once you have your core two items, but uh, they don't really matter as much as obviously these first two. And then Katarina, just going for Spark and Gumblade are fine. Um, the condition for playing this comp is going to be you have Noxus early, because if you look at how Noxus works, is that it's a, it's a, it is a synergy that gives you stats based on like the number of people you've conquered or like people you've beat. So for, you know, for a total of seven, because obviously you have seven enemies. So uh, you really want to start stacking this early because even though you think that 10% might not be a lot because it gives, you know, three, uh, 30 HP for your entire team, three AD, three AP for your entire team. Once you get up to 70%, you, the way you can think about it is that the maximum potential of this comp is almost double uh, what it would be if you just like randomly pivoted it into it uh, in the late game. So you're pretty much getting like half the effectiveness if you pivot into it. Whereas like if you start off in the early game, you get some stacks with, you know, Casio, Samira plus one of these units and you can win, then you're just going to be a lot stronger come in the late game. And this comp really is a snowball -y comp. So your strongest stages are going to be stage two and stage three, where you can accumulate an HP and a gold lead by streaking uh, and by winning fights, obviously. And then that'll give you time to hit your three stars when they start fall when the two stars start falling off. Obviously, two star four costs are gonna be stronger than two star three costs most of the time. But if you have an HP lead, you have a uh, gold lead from streaking, you're going to be able to reach these three stars uh, in a much smoother way. The best augment by by far with this comp is gonna be Noxian Domination. It is um, considered an overtuned augment right now. It is extremely overtuned. The way it works is it's just gonna give your team more power as as you accumulate Noxus stacks. So. Once again, getting those early stacks is going to be really important. Uh, this is one of those comps where you really want to consider like being aggressive in your early game, slamming items that um, maybe, you know, you don't think they're that good right now. I don't know. Like even putting like a BT on a Kled and then selling him later is fine. Maybe if you don't have, like you can't build these exact items that you're looking at, like stuff like Sunfire, even though uh, it's not listed as, you know, one of these core items, if they can help you win in the early game, they're just going to be really strong because once again, accumulating those stacks are going to be really important. So, and this is another comp where Sorry, this is the type of comp where like leveling to five on two, two or two, three, being really aggressive is gonna be powerful because once again, if you level to five on two, 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 three, you're going to have a level lead over most of your opponents and just be able to, being able to collect that stack is gonna help you snowball throughout the rest of the game. At level seven, most of the time you're playing set because it is a Darius based comp. Um, at level eight, you do wanna play Echo. Sometimes you hit, um, sometimes you hit uh, Scion on seven or you go A for Scion, he replaces Kled. Kled is a pretty bad unit. These two units are actually reasonably good, even though they're one cost, just because they're ranged. So ranged units just have like higher DPS uptime than melee units. So while your you know, front line is going to be tanking for you, obviously these guys are going to be putting out a little bit of DPS. Um, even though they're one cost, they have so many stats from Noxus that it, um, for the most part, they're actually going to be quite useful. Um, Cassiopeia also gives a little bit of anti-heal and Samira also gives a little bit of armor pen. So they do have a little bit of utility. They're also really good for dodging Zephyrs and positioning around... Um, certain abilities that target backline such as Auction. So yeah, don't, you know, sleep on these two units that much. Cloud is pretty bad unless uh, he's itemized heavily or, you know, upgraded. You can go for three star set Swain and Cloud in this comp, but you do have to make sure that if you're doing that, you have enough econ left over to hit Darius and Cat because you really won't be winning the game probably without these units uh, three star. Um, 
Level 8, you want to fit in Rogue, and that's generally with Echo because he's the best one, and that's pretty much the comp. And then finally, we have Tristana, and um, this is going to be the most probably degenerate comp in the meta. You've probably seen it already. Um, this is not a comp that we really caught in PvE. We thought it was kind of like over nerfed or we were playing around Poppy. But obviously, as the meta has developed, uh, this comp has risen to be one of the strongest comps in the set. So the way, the only um, augment that you're going to really care about with this comp is on a roll, because on a roll allows you to hit your three stars really, really easily. And um, teaching like players how to play honor roll is going to be really quite difficult because it's one of those augments that you're really just going to have to play at least once to understand exactly how strong it is. Um, even at the highest level of play, at least in North America, you're going to see players, even myself, you know, a lot of the other pros, they're going to be messing it up, you know, from time to time, just because you, you do really have to do a lot to play honor roll kind of optimally. But if you do play it just well enough, you will always almost always have your three stars um, in early stage three. And as soon as you have three three stars with Yordle in, generally at level six, um, then your Poppy, or sorry, your Tristana is going to go up to four star. And four star Tristana will pretty much win you out the entire stage on stage four, or sorry, on stage three, most of stage four as well. And then you're just going to really go on a level four four gunner with Senna and Zeri, or sometimes it's with Jinx if you can't find Senna. So just four of, sorry, three of these three units. You obviously want to put your Zeke's next to Tristana. Um, eventually. Alternatively, you could also play around Heimerdinger and 5 Yordle. You don't even need an upgraded Kled, and this is going to upgrade your Poppy to a 4-star. Generally speaking, this isn't as strong because Maokai is the significantly better unit to stack, but, um, you know, in some games you have so many items from either the portal that you get or late-game carousels that a 4-star Poppy is going to be really strong. But obviously that hinges on you being able to hit Heimerdinger, which is not the most consistent thing. Uh, the way to get in this comp really is either you hit on a roll and you could hard force it, or you hit a lot of early Tristana, Poppy, Viegos, and Maokais, and you think you have the items for it. The core items are going to be Gunblade and Last Whisper, Last Whisper being the most important item, and then just a bunch of tank items on Maokai. So that could be uh, Protector's Vow, wait, sorry, Protector's Vow is not here, Protector's Vow, Bramble, uh, Warmogs, uh, Stoneplate, Declaw, pretty much any tank items just go on Maokai, and you're good to go. So... Once again, the augment is the main augment you're looking for is on a roll if you know how to play it. If you don't, just playing it normally is fine, but on a roll will be the strongest. Otherwise, dueling gunners, you know, same thing. It's just a rage blade for pretty much all your gunners. It's going to be really good. And you want to fill out your Tristana items. And yeah, this comp is really uh, just the easiest comp probably to play because um, after you hit all your three stars, you're not going to be really making too many decisions. So. Play this comp as it's considered the most degenerate comp in the meta, but um, do know that after the patch, Honor Roll will be getting nerfed, and Tristana will be receiving slight nerfs as well. It will probably still be strong, but um, it's going to be significantly less consistent than it is right now. So kind of get your LP while you can. And then, yeah, some closing thoughts. Um, if you want to, you know, look at my profile, see what I'm playing. Uh, I am mostly playing around Zeri and Kai'Sa the most. Zeri and Kai'Sa. They're my two best performing units so yeah you can look at my profile here i am still you know doing quite well i will try to you know get higher myself and then yeah that's the video so it just you know if you let me know if you want to see more guides like this in the future let me know what you know you want to see uh, i will be trying to make a comprehensive augment guide um, after the patch because they are nerfing a lot of the strongest augments in the game right now so i want to see you know what that looks like um, in a couple days and then if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below Otherwise, just like and subscribe and follow my Twitch at Goobums and my Twitter at Goobums. Thanks. Have a nice day and peace out.